We have a very special guest with us as our next speaker. If you haven't witnessed a rocket launch at Wallops, it's probably something you should put on your bucket list. But we're really honored and pleased today to have the director of the Wallops Island Flight Facility, William Robble, with us. In 2010, NASA Administrator Charles Bolden named William Bill Robble as director of NASA Goddard Space Flight Center's Wallops Flight Facility and director of Suborbital and Special Orbital Projects Directorate. The facility's diverse mission sets on-site partners, which include the U.S. Navy, the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration, the FAA, Virginia Space, and the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport. Bill was Assistant Associate Administrator for Launch Services at NASA Headquarters and served as Director for Orbital Taurus Launch Vehicle Program. Please welcome from Wallace Bill Robble. All right, so I usually start these with a little bit of humor anyway, uh, aerospace related, um, and the cornier the better. Uh, so uh, today's uh, humor is compliments of Star Trek. I don't know if any of you are sci-fi junkies like some of us at Wallops, um, but some of you surely have to remember the series, and certainly the, there's been a number of movies. Most folks concentrate on uh, Spock, right, the pointy ears, um, but t today's humor is, um, uh, question on how many ears does Captain Kirk have? Anybody know the answer to that question? Right, seems obvious. Well, he's got three. He's got the right ear, the left ear, and the final frontier. So <laughs> that's, that's my humor. <clears throat> and so with that, um, uh, I, what I would probably do is, uh, you know, just wanted to at least say thank you to the uh, Salisbury Chamber for inviting us up here. Uh, how many of you here uh, have either family or friends that are maybe attached to the Wallops uh, flight facility out there? I see, that, I see there's a number of you. And then I heard um, uh, the person that introduced me ask how, how many folks had actually been to a rocket launch uh, down there at the facility. I see a few hands, not as many, probably seen a few from the back porch. Um, but I, I guess what I'd say is uh, certainly would like to invite you out uh, to see uh, one of them. I, I know for me personally, as a youngster growing up, that was one of the things I think that set the hook as to what it was I wanted to do in life. Um, and so uh, at Wallops, uh, been there since uh, 2010 now, uh, we've seen a, a fair amount of growth uh, you, you know, in a number of areas uh, in the aerospace community. So uh, our budget has grown uh, just in the, in the last uh, eight years that I've been there, about a little over 40%. Uh, and in that same time frame, um, the population, uh, both uh, civil servant-wise and then our workforce, uh, our partners, uh, has also uh, grown. That's, that's another 15%. So um, 2019 actually looks to improve even on that mark, uh, which, is, which is really good. Um, what Wallops has, has uh, kind of transformed itself into is it's, while it is a NASA flight facility, it's not a NASA only flight facility. And I think that's the important feature here is that um, the, the diversification and what we uh, have been able to achieve here uh, is pretty remarkable. So um, we kind of look at Wallops as a toolbox. It has a number of features uh, that a lot of folks can pull on. So in our case, uh, from a NASA perspective, right, we fly uh, aircraft out of there. Uh, we fly a number of sounding rockets uh, out of there and then kind of worldwide. Um, our balloon program uh, is, is, uh, is managed out of there. And then obviously you've seen a lot of what uh, has, t has really taken place in the last number of years with the orbital-based uh, rockets. So the facility, while it's been there since uh, 1945, uh, I'd say in the last uh, eight to ten years has, has, has really uh, changed uh, quite a bit. Um, you know, the Navy has a, has a big presence there. Uh, a lot of the work that we are, are now doing is um, uh, helping out other, I'd say, government customers, commercial customers. I'd say one of the, uh, the most recent things is that, you know, every now and then uh, an economic impact analysis is, is uh, performed. And so uh, Old Dominion uh, University out of Hampton Roads has, uh, is wrapping up uh, kind of the latest one. And what we really wanted to do this time was uh, take a look at Wallops as a kind of a community. 
So uh, what you're looking at here is, is the island. Uh, we're two, two basically uh, large parcels separated by about seven miles. But the, uh, but the uh, uh, island is where we do uh, basically all of our hazardous work, as you might imagine. And the Navy has a big presence there. So you can kind of see the water tower a little bit, but that's uh, where the uh, uh, Virginia Commercial Space Flight Authority's uh, Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport is housed. And um, uh, what I wanted to do first is get into what I think I have here is a video. Okay. Like I said, the corner is better. All right. This is uh, some some uh, uh, unmanned aerial system uh, uh, look at kind of the uh, island as a whole. So it's a you know seven miles long for folks that have been there, uh, and at the widest point, maybe a half a mile. So uh, that gives you a little bit of an idea, thank you, as to the activities that are going on there. And there's a lot of it, and it's uh, continuing to go in the right direction uh, up uh, for, for all of us. And it kind of continues to grow. And so I had mentioned you know, some of the numbers earlier just relative to the NASA portion of things. Uh, but as I mentioned, we, we are now looking at it more as a complex. So if you include NASA and the Navy and NOAA, uh, Virginia Space, Northrop Grumman, the Coast Guard, which are all uh, en entities basically there at the facility. Um, the latest numbers basically show that coming in at roughly $1.17 billion annually, uh, spread over Virginia and the three counties uh, here in Maryland. Um, so we've got r roughly those six major employers there, and that's uh, about 1,900 people total, uh, jobs-wise. So. I mean, that's pretty remarkable when you look at it uh, overall, just it's, it's been a neat ride these last uh, eight years for me personally. And so um, kind of relative to some of the new business things that we're looking at, uh, the Air Force has come to us uh, with some of these um, uh, where they are interested in getting ballistic data off of the aging uh, fleet of, of ICBMs that they've got. And actually what's really neat is they're turning a number of these things into space launch vehicles. So uh, as the taxpayers has, have kind of already invested in the hardware, we're able to actually use these things now for space launch. Um, and so part of what they have asked us to do is to help them come up with a cheap conversion process uh, to where we can actually um, either put a third stage on these things to make them orbital uh, or, or just basically to come up with a, a good interface package so that we can use them for suborbital tests uh, and research. And so Sandia National Labs and a lot of the other facilities have a number of experiments they'd like to fly, but they would like uh, a cheap ride, cheap access into that uh, 
low Earth orbit or, or even uh, the more 15 to 20 minute time just residence in space. So a number of things that are going on there. And I think, um, you know, if you look at some of the other uh, things that are coming in, uh, the National Reconnaissance Office, uh, another government agency, is taking a number of these uh, repurposed ICBMs and using them for space launch. Uh, they've signed on with us for, for three missions coming up, uh, the earliest which is, uh, appears to be late next year. Uh, so we look at that as a, as a really good sign. Um, and we'll see probably a, a number more of these kinds of launches coming forward, as I mentioned with the, what we're doing with the Air Force. So if I take a look going forward on the commercial side of things, um, you know, folks have read in the paper recently, Rocket Lab, a New Zealand company, just signed with us. Um, and it, it appears that uh, we're, we've got not only a new launch pad that'll be going on the island, uh, but they're also putting in a, a manufacturing and integration facility into the research park, which is a, a big deal for us. Um, it's something we've been uh, hoping for for a long time, and we're hoping that that first one uh, resident in the park will bring uh, a number of others that come in. And there's a number of other of these small uh, commercial companies that, that have been talking to us. Uh, and I'd say that a lot of that is part of what DARPA is doing. Uh, and they're trying to get uh, this new challenge out, which is to basically launch twice in two weeks from two different launch sites. And Wallops is, is one of the launch sites that they're talking to us about. So we're, we're kind of excited about, uh, you know, where that's going to take us next. You know, if you take a look at what Rocket Lab's talking about, there's uh, another 30 jobs then that would come into the area. Uh, they're talking about a cadence to where they'd like to launch, you know, once every couple of weeks. Um, and that would be uh, spectacular, I think, for, for all of us going forward. Uh, also, relative to new business is the unmanned aerial systems. Uh, a couple of my point to is the, is the one... Uh, kind of right in the center there is uh, Vanilla Aircraft. Think about this one for, for a minute. So Vanilla Aircraft is a commercial company. Uh, it's a long duration, uh, kind of mid-altitude uh, vehicle that uh, the Department of Defense is interested in, Pax River in particular. So uh, they basically have contracted with Vanilla uh, to help develop that hardware and make it something into a, a real platform. So um, PAX came to us and said, hey, uh, would, would you mind if we flew it at your facility? One of the neat uh, aspects that has occurred at Wallops over the last uh, 10 years is we've gotten a little bit more restricted airspace that we can call up to do these kinds of missions. Our proximation to the ocean makes it uh, conducive, I think, you know, from a hazard standpoint, over flying water. Uh, and if you come down on the water, it's a, maybe a, a disappointment and you lose the plane. Uh, but, but at least you've not damaged any property uh, or, or uh, worse, uh, any inhabitants. So in that particular case, you got a uh, commercial company, uh, another government sponsor, the Navy, uh, flying out of a NASA flight facility on uh, Virginia's um, UA new UAV runway. So you can imagine the contractual mechanisms that folks had to go through to put all that together, uh, especially the first time. Um, going on subsequent to that should be a lot easier. The other one there is uh, in the upper uh, right is uh, CMOB, C-Mobility Experiment, uh, which is out of Norfolk Hampton Roads uh, Navy there where they've got a, uh, an unmanned boat uh, that comes up the shore. And then this unmanned vehicle basically uh, pops out of a container pneumatically, the wings unfold, and then they're flying over also onto the, uh, the new UAV runway at the north end of the island uh, to basically uh, go after a target there. So uh, some really neat things coming up. Uh, the next big thing uh, I think for us will be in the area of hypersonics. There's a lot of interest in uh, doing some test work in, uh, in the hypersonic area. Um, the one neat feature that Wallops has always been is it's been a test range since the early 40s and uh, we have not lost that capability. So while we're doing a lot more of the operational things with the commercial companies, uh, we've never given up that, that uh, ability to do test where things don't always go as, as you plan. So um, I know that there's a, a number of other folks that are coming up, but I at least wanted to give you a flavor of what has taken place at Wallops. Uh, I do hope you can kind of come down and uh, take it in for yourselves. Uh, you really ought to see what you're paying for uh, because all of you are paying for it. And, um, it, and I, think, I think that uh, by transitioning kind of more into that multi-tenant, multi-user facility, it's a lot better deal for the taxpayer as a whole. A lot more people are paying to keep that infrastructure up. So that's what we think we're doing well. So thank you very much, and I really do appreciate uh, your interest.